I'm your host, Effie Pilarinu, and today I will not be traveling. I'm here in Switzerland with a, a colleague that I haven't seen in a long time because of, you know, the, the, the reason we all know. Uh, this is Oscar Nera, uh, and um, Oscar, you know, he's, he's a payment expert. We've been around here in Switzerland since the early days of, of FinTech. I know him because he's also the editor of Money Today, one of the best uh, online uh, money um, uh, publications, if, if you want. And I also think of him as the person to go and discuss about all these payment systems and regulations, especially ISO 20022. And I'm delighted to, to have you join us, uh, Oscar. Thank you for making the time. Oh, Effie, thank you to, for having me. That's great. Well, and I'm I mean, really happy to see you again because uh, we need really to catch up for, uh, for some drinks. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And at least we're privileged here in Switzerland. Distances are small. We, we can make it uh, uh, happen. And what a time to talk about payments and especially, you know, cross-border challenges with all these uh, sanctions. And, and I feel that, you know, suddenly we are starting to realize that um, there are other systems uh, outside what we are used to, you know, SWIFT and SEPA and, and, and so on. And, and we need to understand them and understand the challenges and, and see what's going on. So I'm delighted to talk uh, with you about these topics as you are an expert. And I have to confess that as a, uh, an investment banking and sales and trading uh, background that I have, I, I kind of always thought, oh, payments are easy. That's low hanging fruit. But of course, through my, my fintech journey, I realized that payments are not easy uh, and, and they are becoming even more complex for several reasons. So I'm excited to pick your brain, Oscar. Yes, this is absolutely true. And um, um, everybody thinks, oh, yes, payments, it's just uh, we have this e-banking and we see these numbers in the e-banking and they just popping up there. So payments is easy. So, but payments are a really, really huge world. And I think we just to, to, to get, uh, uh, just to funnel it a little bit, we will speak today uh, as uh, I think um, just about bank account to bank account payments because uh, card payments, it's a complete other world. So this is a, a separate world between this account, bank account to bank account world or uh, like uh, interbank or like corporate to banks payments or so on. And uh, I think today we focus a little more on that and less on, on, on credit card schemes and so on. So I'm uh, happy to speak about that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a great distinction um, that, that you make because all these things that happen behind the scenes, uh, as you say, are not um, uh, easy and um, especially cross-border, but, but not only. So shall we start by looking into, first of all, tell us a bit about your online publication money um, uh, today, uh, what exactly do you cover and how did, did it come about and how old is it? Well, Money Today is a German speaking or German writing uh, platform. We started in 2014 with another name. The name was ISO20022.ch. So uh, the name was program at that time, and the idea was just to to put some I, to put some news together, and be because at that time started to be the real hot time in the payments migration from the old formats in Switzerland 
to the new format, this uh, XML ISO 20022 format, right? So we started this, uh, this uh, platform just with that idea, not very focused on that, but then we started to write about, uh, and especially Rudy, who is the who is the owner of the platform, started to write um, uh, about deeper uh, topics, about other topics uh, uh, outside of ISO 2002. We started to write about uh, fintech, and we started to go to events and cover that. That was more my my part to cover the events. And so we was growing and, and we reached a, 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 point. a, point. a yeah, point. we reached a point that we said, okay, um, this name didn't cover anymore the the our the thing which we are publishing. So we changed the name to in 2018 to Money Today. Then we had a really new and, and broader growth in there. And now we are quite uh, uh, yes, we are not at 20 minutes, uh, <laughs> the, the publishing like 20 minutes, but we, we are in, in fintech, in payments, and especially, and also in banking, and especially in Switzerland, uh, a bit tech focused. We are, uh, yes, very, very well known and very well uh, read it every day. So, so tell us, uh, 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 put us uh, a little bit of context around ISO 2022. We are in 2022. Where do we stand um, here in Switzerland? And also what is happening in Europe around us within that context of, always of, of uh, um, uh, facilitating, streamlining, digitizing payments? Yes. So. First of all, what, what is ISO 2022? So I can go very deep in, in details. It brings no much value, but uh, just in, in high level, ISO 2022 is a format. So it's, it's a standard, as we know, ISO is for standardization, and this is a format standardization. That means when banks are exchanging information from one bank to another, saying, hey, Oscar paid to Effie 100 Swiss francs, please transfer these 100 Swiss francs from my account to Effie's account from UBS to Credit Suisse, whatever. And they are communicating like that. And this must be to be in a straight through process. This must have such kind of informations in standardized informations. And this information was uh, in the old days was very um, um, limited to transfer these informations. Because as you all know that uh, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, transfer of data was very costly. Today you can transfer whatever data, it's really for free. So, um, now the informations, also the regulator, want to have more information uh, uh, also regarding uh, uh, money laundry and all this and all this thing, want to have this information inside this, uh, this payment uh, um, file, this payment transfer. So these files are, uh, are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that was a change needed. Uh, a new format was needed. In 2004, this, uh, the, the ISO standardization organization started this uh, ISO 2022 messages. Now we are nearly 20 years later. So as you see this, this long times which uh, 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 um, the banks need to transform there, um, we are now here and Switzerland are complete uh, based on ISO 2022. So the interbank payments, the clients to payments um, uh, channel means the corporates. If I am Nestle, Roche, uh, whatever big corporate, I have also these communications to do between the banks. Th these are all also in uh, ISO 2022. And now based on that format, we can uh, give more 
better and faster service. And faster means also instant payments. But uh, this will be maybe your next question, I assume. Yes, and, and yes, it, tell us about instant payments, but also um, is the rest of Europe done with the ISO 2022 harmonization? If, if you want, is it completed or there are still batches that are not um, uh, yet uh, harmonized? Well, this is a good point, uh, Effie. So, yeah, so I was just focusing on Switzerland and you are right, we are, we, we are, there are more outside there than just Switzerland. Okay. So um, in Europe, we have uh, SIPA payments. Yeah. So everybody has heard probably about SIPA payments and SIPA payments, it's just Euro payments. So if you transfer, a, if you're making a Euro transfer, the banks are doing that in SIPA. But there are more than just Euro transfers. Of Maybe somebody wants to transfer dollars or from Switzerland, uh, Swiss francs to, to a Eurozone yeah. or from uh, Sweden to a Eurozone, yeah, which are UK, Corona. Or the UK. Uh, or the UK. Uh, so, so we had in, in Europe SIPA. This is a broad thing in ISO 2022. But there was a lot of satellites out there who wasn't uh, on that format. Also in the interbank format communication between the uh, ECB and the banks, there was uh, not ISO 2022 and uh, they are going now. They must be all until November this year must be on ISO 2022 on this target two system. They have to communicate uh, in this eye. So this is a bank thing, which they need to change their backends uh, from bank to the target too. But uh, the same thing and the same story is going on in other countries or regions. So we have Switzerland as a country, let's say, and we have Europe, different countries as a region. So there are also countries and regions out outside who are transforming to ISO 2022. We have the United States. They are going also in the, uh, are on different paths going to ISO 2022. We have Canada, uh, we have um, Australia, we have uh, uh, several other countries outside there. Uh, Eastern Europe, they have other uh, um, currencies. They are also going to ISO 2022. And then we have this other big elephant called uh, uh, SWIFT, which until now or still currently are working on these really old formats, limited formats, who was uh, decided in, 19, in the 1970s to introduce them. And since then, never, never changed. So, so SWIFT have, is not harmonized with ISO 2022. Um, that's correct. So um, just to explain two things, uh, when we are speaking about SWIFT, we are speaking always about two things. We are speaking about SWIFT formats, right. how the envelope is. How, how the I message how my the message is, is is formatted yes and then we are speaking but also we are speaking about the highway of swift so okay. the channel the rails the, that they are or, using or the protocol in technically speaking so if i put some information into this channel so there is the swift channel so and in the swift channel you can exchange um, xml when you are when Swiss banks are communicating between the, their others, but they need to, when they are communicating cross-border to other banks, they are using still this very old formats MT, and they need, and uh, also now in November 22, this starts a migration phase of three or five years, so that all banks all over the world are changing to this new 
format called ISO 20022. And this is the so-called MT old format to MX. This is the new format. They call it like that. This is the product name. And, um, and, um, and they are changing to that. So, because what we forget having our uh, Western view on, on the world, that uh, there are also other countries outside there. They are not like, um, not comparable to our economy. And they are not technically, but, uh, but economically speaking, they are not able to change that thing very, very fast, right? So they need the time of three or five years to, to transform their backends and their banks, introduce new applications, buy new stuff. So um, this will be very costly and um, they need that time. So, But Oscar, now that you, you're painting this you know, picture and, and, and enlarging it, I have to ask you, how Russia and China fit in this big picture, because you know, given the situation uh, as it, the geopolitical situation, we suddenly heard of the MIR, MIR payment system that Russia has domestically. And if I understand correctly, it's kind, it's run by the central bank. It's I don't know if the correct analogy is with SWIFT, but if you can tell us, and then I know that China has its own, which is SIPs, um, at least for domestic uh, use. So what is going on with those systems and will they harmonize? Maybe they had the intention to harmonize and now they may not. Can you well, enlighten um... us? <laughs> I have to explain uh, uh, a thing and uh, what is really SWIFT. So in SWIFT, you are not transferring money. Correct. So it's you don't messaging. send, it's yes. just the messaging. So um, I like to compare it uh, and it's easy to explain. Think about uh, 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 40, 50, 60 years ago, how the people made the trades so they said, okay, I am a, I am a buyer of, of uh, wheat somewhere. And uh, now I have to send a card. So physically, physically uh, via, don't know, Western Union at that time, physically to my bank saying, hey, please bank, please transfer X amount of money from my bank account to the bank account of my of, 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 of my counterpart. So this was at that time, then in the near time was uh, by, uh, by a telex and fax and phone until we came up with the messages. So SWIFT is like a postal system, yeah. just ele electronically, who sends this information which say, please transfer my money to that money. It's a so message to execute an order sort of speech or a transaction, but, but they are not executing the transaction. That is, that is clear. Exactly, yes. So, and the second thing is, we have also this embargoed story, right? So right. how Europe and America can embargo the dollars and the euros when they are owned by the Russian central bank. So because the money goes, goes not outside of the countries. So if I am UBS and I have dollars, I don't have dollars in my vaults. I have dollars at my bank account, let's say at City New York. And yeah. City New York as owner of the dollars owes me X trillion, billion, billion of dollars to me, uh, uh, UBS. And uh, then I say, pay me X amount of dollar. I send a swift message to, to City New York and City New York transfer these dollars to um, JP Morgan yeah. and JP Morgan 
put this uh, money into the account of uh, Credit Suisse, uh, which is your account. So they are informing the whole, um, the whole network uh, of all these people, of all these uh, counterparts who need to know that, that this bank transfer is done. And uh, this is the reason why um, the Central Bank of Russia has uh, this, his money in an American bank in his account, and okay. that's why they could embargo it. So, and this is also the, and, and now, no, having said that, I think it comes clear what is SWIFT and what is, uh, how they could embargo it, because they disconnected from SWIFT, um, so the Russian banks cannot send outside of Russia, Russia uh, orders. They are not just orders, but just leave it with that. They cannot send orders and execute or receive money. Right. But they, but can, they can do it by phone. They can do it by phone. Okay. Maybe. Yes. Not the embargo at money, but if, if they have... Uh, if they have uh, um, Chinese or, or any other um, currencies, they can execute it by phone. And of course, with, with their domestic currency within their country, they can use their own payment rails. They don't need the, the SWIFT messaging system and they can do those, uh, execute whatever they want in rubles within the country. Exactly. So. After two, 2014, where was this first um, 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 challenge with Russia and Ukraine? Yeah. So the Russians started to build their own SWIFT-like network. This is not MIR, because MIR is more compared to the Visa and, and MasterCard scheme. So it's more a credit card scheme inside okay. of the country. Um, but uh, the Russian uh, name is uh, SPFS, okay. and um, this is the compare, swift comparison to, to in Russia. Okay. And then is the, the same thing made China with SIPS, CIPS, yeah. and they are also connecting the banks. So SPFS, of course, um, they can con connect to and transfer this, these messages to all these banks who are connected on, on that ecosystem. But uh, the banks who are not connected on that ecosystem are outside. So uh, this is the strength or even the, the, the weapon or, uh, or used now as a weapon uh, from SWIFT. Uh, who are, this is the strength from SWIFT, who are connected worldwide to this around, I don't know, they say, I think 11,000 yes. different banks. banks just to communicate between one and the other. Got it, got it. Oscar, shall we go back to, to um, away from sanction land and, and these issues? I wanted to ask you, um, we spoke about banks uh, not being all ready uh, for this harmonization of ISO 2022. What about all the fintechs that don't have banking licenses but are in the payment space? Uh, what about them? How affected are they? Do, do they have to comply? Is it a big issue for them? And I think of fintechs that you know most fintechs now are i mean a lot of them are already 10 years old or you know five or six years old is pretty common uh, especially in the payment sector that is relatively mature and and you we have many fintechs i was looking at uh, before speaking to you at the swiss fintech ecosystem and over 20 percent uh, is really uh, in in the payment sector of course mm -hmm. b2b b2c so this is a big sector how how can we think of of that sector and the challenges with iso uh, 2022 
Well, there are different uh, levels in, in that question. So uh, if we start with the uh, ISO 2002 level, let's say like that. So this is not difficult. So uh, this is a, a ongoing thing which the uh, fintechs and payment uh, payment service provider, let's call it like that, if they communicate between them and his banks, they need to comply with, with a sort of format. And this format, this format was in the older days another one, and these days is are the ISO 2022. But there are a second level, and maybe you also ask that is uh, in Switzerland we have this sandbox where uh, uh, fintechs have uh, this so-called fintech license. Right, the, the like, the, like yeah. yes, and there are also other uh, similar sandboxes out in in other countries, and uh, the thing with that sandbox or with the in Switzerland it's not a sandbox; it's really a, a, a banking license light. Light, yes. It's a it's a fintech license. For uh, uh, they have uh, certain uh, levels they cannot uh, go over. So, but the good thing is they can connect directly to the Swiss franc interbank clearing. Ah, okay. okay. So this is the real good thing because this is really a real simulation of of this is really the the first step before being a bank. So I'm doing my payment business. I'm connected to the Swiss franc uh, interbank clearing. I have access to that and I must I can I must not go over a bank having a bank account and communicate with this bank, having also these costs of the bank and the bank account, but I can communicate directly, directly. to the to the Swiss National Which is Bank. Something and, that the UK fintechs were asking for a long time to connect directly and have the advantages and, and, and so on. Absolutely. And, and this is really good, but this all payment uh, in, uh, institutions and the uh, payment service provider and so on, they all need, and they are also controlled and they need to have the compliance in, in ALM, uh, uh, anti-money laundering, uh, also AML, anti-money laundering, embargo lists, they must check. So they must do all this. So uh, don't care if they are connected to to the clearing or they are in a uh, with a bank account so they need to comply with that too yeah so we yeah. have always this uh, this um, compliance there now that you say compliance we have to to touch on crypto and cbdc's um and especially given the the recent announcement from lugano that they will legalize uh, um and and invest uh, uh, for the adoption of Bitcoin and two stable coins, one of them being a dollar back stable coin tether, and the other one being um, a Lugano issued a stable coin backed, uh, obviously, by, by the Swiss franc. So, what are your thoughts around payments and, and these types of? Um, payment ways, if you want. I don't want to get into the discussion if they're currencies or not currencies, but we're talking about different rails to, to do value transfer, if, if you want. Uh, share some thoughts, although I know this could be even a topic of a whole uh, discussion. Well, we could discuss for more three more hours just, uh, yes. just about that topic. So, well, just to, to be politically correct, um, let's speak about the payment rails because uh, there are people outside there, they don't like to speak about Bitcoin and compare it to a currency. Well, this, this I think it's, it's, it's a point of view. My personal point of view, this is complete my personal, is that Bitcoin is a, uh, it's, it's a currency, it's a cryptocurrency and, uh, and uh, it's a challenger, it's a startup of a currency, let's say it like that, uh, because it's a startup they are, 
this volatility peaks. So uh, until a, a startup is grown and become a, a corporate and, and the, the startup currency will, gr will grow, or I am agree that will grow and become a real currency. So, um, and the volatility hopefully will go, go down. So the announcement from, from Lugano, I, I think um, this is very good. So we have, um, we have Zug, which has the similar uh, thing. They, they just moved, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't remember, four, five, six years ago. Yes. Since you can uh, pay your, uh, a certain amount of taxes directly with uh, Bitcoin. So the people say, hey, until you cannot pay your taxes, it's not a currency. So now you can pay taxes. So, so there is still no currency for some people. So, but we are, we are going step by step. Uh, I think the first step for Lugano is very good politically seen because they want to become the most important um, uh, place for, for crypto business. Um, but of course, they will have it hard because just having, uh, just uh, accepting cryptos, it's just the first step. Then you need to work on regulations, um, how you can uh, accept uh, uh, people from uh, expats, um, how much time it takes to build a company, uh, how, how costly it is, taxes, so compared to Ticino, this is the region of, uh, of Lugano, compared to the region of, of Zug, of the canton of Zug. So the taxes are quite uh, much higher in, in Ticino there in the canton Zug. So these are all different, which uh, with the time, I'm sure uh, Lugano and the whole canton of Ticino will, will, will become better. And uh, then you asked me also with the stable coins and uh, the CBDC. The story. CBDC. <laughs> Are we going to have a CBDC <laughs> in Switzerland? <laughs> I mean, just now that Biden signed the executive order, and a lot of the interpretation uh, out there is that you know the, the U.S. will really go for a CBDC. Uh, any thoughts around a Swiss CBDC, uh, given? There's so many pilots that have it, that you know Switzerland has has helped and supported in different ways. Well, um, first of all, what is CBDC? So CBDC is Central Bank Digital Currency (CBDC), and there are more. So and and there are mainly two two um, um, nice. ways of doing CBDC. There are so-called wholesale CBDC and there are so-called retail CBDC. So what's the difference? The wholesale D CBDC, it's just an exchange. It's, it's, it's a real Swiss, Swiss franc based on cryptocurrencies on this technology but exchanged just in this central bank money. What is central bank money? This is that what we spoke before when we spoke about Russia and the embargoed dollars and euros. This is the central money, central bank money, which are just exchanged between central bank and between the, and between interbanks. So when they are exchanging between them, let's say the Swiss franc. And the retail CBDC and, uh, and uh, Miss Matter, which is from uh, Swiss uh, nat National uh, Bank, um, she's in the board of Swiss National Bank. Uh, she said, Switzerland will never have a retail CBDC. She said that on different conferences and um, uh, or it, it's not, it's not planned to have a retail CBDC. So what is a retail CBDC is to have a digital currencies and the 
people outside and the corporates and the companies and the SMEs outside has a digital wallet and are have directly a bank account with the Swiss National Bank. Okay. So the Chinese tested the retail CBDC now in the uh, during the Olympics. Yeah. They tested it in, in a broad uh, way. How they can exchange, is it affordable? Can, uh, does it work technically? And uh, in Switzerland, we had different uh, POCs, so proof of concepts, which made the Swiss National Bank together with the Bank for International Settlement. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure you have heard that. So um, they tested different things. So the last test, the so-called Helvetia POC uh, um, and part two, uh, they tested if a, a technical crypto environment can be implemented in a bank environment. And having implemented that, if they can exchange different values. Value. And I say value to not say currency because the Swiss franc and the currency was just one value to exchange, but they want to exchange also bonds securities and... like bonds, like yeah. digitized bonds and so on. Yes. So there was a proof of concept. The proof of concept was, uh, um, as they say, positive. They, they proved that, that this is possible in the old-fashioned old fashioned bank environment, put these new-fashioned things inside and exchange it with, uh, with the national bank and the, with the Swiss franc clearing on one hand. On two hands, they, uh, on the other hand, they also tested international payments. And this is quite tricky and this is very smart. This was this, uh, this other project called Jura where the Swiss National Bank and the Banque de France, also together with the uh, 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 Bank of International Settlement, mm -hmm. they tested a uh, Swiss bank, a uh, Swiss franc and euro payment Excellent. in wholesale CBDC and yeah. how that works. So also that came uh, positive outside. They found uh, some challenges, but uh, this is nothing which cannot be uh, uh, solved. But uh, yeah, now this, this proof of concepts are outside there. Um, um, uh, theoretically, it could start to build it. But uh, yeah, now the, the financial place, so the financial market of Switzerland and the SMB and the regulatory and all these people need to sit together and decide if they want to have a, a CBDC or not. Or not, or not. One thing it's good because, uh, so I have two hearts on that. One heart is my technical heart and uh, having a, a CBDC is, uh, brings real value, not especially in, in velocity because velocity will not be especially faster, but uh, uh, in, in operations, because uh, we'll have um, uh, the settlement and the payment and the settlement will be atomic. Mind so you, we much. have a new buzzword. Yes, yeah, atomic. At atomic settlement. Atomic habits <laughs> is, is a bestseller and atomic <laughs> payments. Uh, atomic the settlement, payments. this is our new buzzword. <laughs> yes. So yeah. they are, this, this, this occurs instantly. So, um, all the information are exchanged in one way. So yeah, yeah. this is interesting. What and, and what my other heart say is um, because CBDC is programmable, so uh, the national bank can always see where this money is. So okay, they can say it is with it is with uh, with uh, UBS or with Credit Suisse, and but they can also with a with pushing one button they can close and and ban you from that so they can say today oh we don't like uh, 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 oscar 
spare bank Swiss, Switzerland, yes. with one uh, um, pushing one button, they don't have any access to, to the Swiss franc. And if this go to the retail CBDC, they can do the same with Oscar, or yes. say, hey, Oscar is too fat, he cannot pay any pizzas with his Swiss francs anymore. And he's also <laughs> a friend of Effie, we don't like Effie, and on yeah. and on and on. Yes, and, so and these are maybe the uh, conspiracy theory uh, things, but yeah. uh, these thoughts must be must be done too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and and now I came back, come back, and and I'm finished. Sorry, I'm speaking yeah. too much. Sorry, Effie. No, no, so that's it. We have this. You you spoke about stable coin. So I think stable coin can be the connection from the retail person to the wholesale CBDC. Because a retail CBDC doesn't make sense because the people are making his mind and thinking about all these uh, conspiracy theories. Okay. Sure, on, hey, yeah. hand, on, on the other hand, a Swiss National Bank don't want to have all this hurdle in, in micromanagement and, and having a bank account, uh, Oscar's bank account with a thousand bucks on it. So they don't want to have that. and and. Uh, okay. And, and overview all these bank accounts and the stable coin can be the connection to that when the people have a good digital uh, wallet, a good digital stable coin wallet, they make their payments, it arrives to the bank, the information digitally, the information can go directly to, to, the, to the national bank, and make there the atomic settlement. So this end-to-end -end can be done with, uh, uh, at least in theory, can be done with the uh, uh, um, wholesale CBDC and the uh, retail and the stable coins. Oscar, I want to thank you. That was a wonderful uh, discussion. And I can now say payments are exciting. And oh, yeah. We have um, a lot to, to, to look forward to, um, definitely, whether it's CBDCs, whether it's crypto, uh, stable coins, and, and um, maybe this all uh, can, can really bring us to the same table to, to harmonize economic activity. That would be a dream, uh, which, which right now doesn't look uh, very probable. Again, thank you so, so much. It was a wonderful discussion. I thank you, Effie. And looking forward to, to meet you again.